Hello friends, today we are going to understand most frequently used unit operations encountered in chemical engineering processes. The description involves the transfer of mass through physical or chemical routes. So first we take the simplest one that is splitter or divider. Splitter is used to divide the flow rate of a certain stream into two or more streams with different flow rates. As shown in figure, input stream F1 is divided into two streams F2 and F3. Since no operation is taking place between inlet and exit streams, the composition of streams F1, F2 and F3 is the same. However, mass flow rates may be different. Next, we come to mixer or blinder. In mixing process, there are two or more entering streams and only one exit stream resulting from the blending of the incoming streams. The streams can be in any phase that is gas, liquid or solid. Here from the figure shows the mixing process flow sheet in which two feed streams F1 and F2 are entering into the mixer or blender and after mixing or blending we get the product as F3. Next, we come to dryer. Drying is a mass transfer process resulting in the removal of moisture by evaporation from a solid or slurry. This figure shows the flow sheet of the drying process. To achieve this operation, the dryer is supplied with a source of heat resulting dried products are in solid phase. And it is not necessary that dried solids are solvent free. But the solvent stream leaves as a pure vapor and is free of solids. Now we come to filter. Filtration is commonly a technique that is used for the separation of solids from fluids by interposing a medium through which only the fluid can pass. As shown in figure, the feed is passed through filter cake. In this process, filtrate the exit liquid is free of solids and is saturated with soluble components. The filter cake remains with some liquid left out. Also, concentration of stream 2 and the liquid remaining with the filter cake is the same. Next, we come to distillation. Distillation is a method of separating chemical substances based on differences in their volatilities. Volatility as we know that it is a tendency of a liquid component to go to the vapor phase. Distillation usually forms part of a larger chemical processes. In the distillation column, more volatile components are in the distillate phase while less volatile components are in the bottoms. Basically, separation is accomplished by boiling. As we see in the figure, each tray accomplishes a fraction of the separation task by transferring the more volatile species to the gas phase and the less volatile species to the liquid phase. Material and energy balance can be performed on an individual tray, column, bottom mirror boiler, top condenser or the entire system. Next we come to multiple effect evaporator. The process of evaporation is used in the different branches of the industry for food or chemical processes in which the concentration of the solution is required. Here figure shows a systematic diagram of a three effect evaporator. It allows decreased consumption of energy for a concentration almost proportionally equal to the number of effects. However, being expensive, evaporators require the reduction of the number of effects in order to be cost effective. The optimal number of effects is generally determined by the help of calculations. Next we come to dehumidification. In this operation as the name suggests level of humidity is reduced in air or a gas stream. A dehumidifier with internal cooling or heating coils is shown in figure. In dehumidification feed streams contains, contains a condensable 
and a non condensable component whereas the condensate is a liquid with the condensable component only such as water and air next we comes to humidification humidifier is a device that increases the amount of vapor in indoor air or any stream of air as shown in figure this operation takes place by allowing water to evaporate from a pan or a wetted surface or by circulating air through an air washer compartment that contains moisture in humidification process feed gas is not saturated liquid is evaporated in the process unit and exit product may or may not be saturated next we comes to leaching and extraction in extraction process two liquid solvents must be immiscible and have different specific gravities and at least one component is transferred from one solvent to the other by a difference in solubility this process is often called as liquid liquid extraction if one of the feed streams is a solid the process is called leaching or liquid solid extraction in leaching the liquid to which materials are extracted from a carrier is not always a solvent here in figure the mixture so treated is called the refinate and the solvent rich phase is called the extract the component transferred from refinate to extract is the solute and the component left behind in the refinate is the diluents next we comes to absorption in gas absorption a soluble component is absorbed by contact with a liquid phase in which the component is soluble as shown in figure the purpose of the unit is to have the liquid absorb a component from the feed gas the liquid stream flows down through the tower due to gravity while the gas stream is pumped upward through the tower no carrier gas is transferred to the liquid generally no liquid solvent is transferred to the gas stream in general in an absorption tower a gas is contacted with the liquid such that one or more components in the gas are transferred into the liquid next we comes to partial condensation and flash separation a partial condenser partly condenses a vapor stream as a name suggests here feed stream contains only condensable vapor components and exit stream contains liquid and vapor which are in equilibrium condensation is caused by cooling or increasing pressure liquid and vapor emerging from the partial condenser are separated using a flash separator as shown in figure flash separator splits the liquid feed into vapor and liquid phase products the feed is a liquid and vaporization is caused by reducing the pressure or by heating vapor and liquid streams are in equilibrium next we comes to crystallizer crystallizers are used in industry to achieve liquid solid separation the process for a crystallizer involves a crystallizer filter combination so as to separate solid crystals from a solution here solid crystals are formed in the unit by a change in temperature as shown in figure the solution to be subjected for crystallization is placed in the crystallizer from the top in this process temperature of the solution reduced and the solution becomes super saturated due to which formation of the crystal begins the propeller is allowed to rotate which serves two purposes firstly it increases the rate of heat transfer thereby helps in cooling and maintains the temperature of the solution almost uniform secondly it keeps fine crystal in suspension which facilitates the crystal to grow uniformly the crystals and the mother liquids are collected from the bottom of the crystallizer In next video I will give the brief clarification and understanding of most frequently used reactors encountered in chemical engineering processes Thank you for watching and please subscribe my YouTube channel